Welcome to Business Daily here on Trust TV, reaching from Abuja's capital, from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Chiamaka Wafo. Let's look at some stop stories from the business world. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us right here on Business Daily on Trust Television. Now, because of a public holiday, the Nigerian Stock Exchange did not get to have trading on the floor. So we won't be having any stock report from the Nigerian Stock Exchange. However, the other countries and African continent, some of them that we normally carry, had some business on their exchange. So let's go to the African continent. Now, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange had a very, 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 it wasn't a very good day for them um, yesterday being the 27th of September 2023. You can see that the went down red 72,174.14 basis points, losing about 2.66%. However, the Ghana Stock Exchange saw a very, very good outturn going positive closing at 3,136.42 basis points increasing by 0.01 percent and the Nairobi stock exchange seems to be going back to its ways of a negative outcome closing at 95.78 basis points losing about 0.88 percent now for the Nairobi stock exchange all through last week um, starting from about Wednesday up until Monday it maintained the range of 96.73, 96.63, but right here we're seeing it's actually lost 0.88% and going down at 94.78. And that's the much we have for you on stock at the moment, but we have so much packaged for you. What's happening in the manufacturing sector and of course our new CBN governor. Do stay with us. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us here on Business Daily, reaching you from Trust Television in Abuja, Nigeria's capital. Now, the manufacturing sector, one of our major sectors, a sector that contributes 10% to the GDP of our great country annually. It seems there seems to be some quite of crisis in it. Now, according to a report from the MAN itself, that's the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, in the first half of this year, the manufacturing sector has expressed a significant loss of over 3,500 jobs and a 32.8% decrease in employment generation compared to the same period in 2022 when we had 9,000 over 9,500 jobs. Also, they're saying that they have unsold finished products, you know, that have not been sold, what billions and billions of Naira. In the studio with me to further look at the crisis in the manufacturing sector in Nigeria is Aliu Elias, an economist. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you for joining us again. Now, man is attributing the policies that were rolled out by our president, you know, from mid 29 actually going forward, the foreign exchange, the forced subsidy removal, as a problem, as one of the reasons why they have experienced this negative outcome of this downward trend in the sector. What do you make of that? And generally, what do you make of that, you know, report from them? Right. I, I'm so happy that they have a research arm and an advocacy arm, which helped a man uh, manufacturing Association of Nigeria to bring out their uh, challenges to the uh, fore so that Nigerians can see that the global uh, world can also see. But the, the, the fact is that they have been at, at the receiving end of the uh, bad economic uh, uh, trajectory uh, uh, so far. You agree with me that uh, over time we have seen the, in fact, when I saw the GDP, you know, uh, statistics, I saw that even now, the last GDP result, uh, result revealed that service sector is now contributing to the economy more than the agricultural sector and manufacturing uh, sector. And that's quite alarming. That shows the negative trend that they have, have been befalling them. You recall that even last year also, they lost considerable numbers of uh, uh, staff. Also, this year also. But you cannot take this away from the economic policy of Nigeria. The one at hand is just the narrow design. It has cripple them and also take uh, erode the purchasing power of Nigerians where we cannot even access our Naira. We can uh, so now they are not saying that they have a lot of unsold. I'm sure you know what when they say something is unsold, you know that that means they produce, mm -hmm. it is available at the market, mm -hmm. but, but no, there is no, no person buy, to, to buy. buy. Yes, it will happen because Nigerian purchasing power has been eroded away by the Naira design earlier, mm -hmm. by also the floating of Naira, mm -hmm. and also removal of uh, subsidies. So this is what we actually have. But the negative impact is that Nigeria is going to have poor GDP, you know, unemployment rates, you know, it's going to affect everything, you know, except there's an urgent attention to it. Remember also, they also have a problem of uh, uh, interest rates. Mm. These people need funds. Mm. to carry out their businesses. But if you go to bank, the NPR is about over 18%. So how do we want them to survive? So I think everything working is like, everything is working against the manufacturing sector in Nigeria for now. So our coordinating minister of the economy, the minister of uh, uh, finance, and ultimately uh, minister for trade and investment, or commerce and industry as it were, they need to come on board to make sure they give us a favorable trade policy that will engender development and help this sector. I also expect the federal government to have a kind of a package for these people, maybe a kind of fund you know, specifically for this uh, sector of the economy, to be able to get this money, to use this money to do a lot of business. Perhaps the also issue of forex is a problem. There is acute shortage of uh, uh, forex. They can also make available forex, special window for these people to assess uh, for it. It's very, very important. Okay, so I'm just going to go um, um, away a bit. And, you know, we have a lot of goods that have been unsold. I can't pinpoint the number right now. And is it safe to say that manufacturers should have the limit to what they manuf what they produce is right the, the, the basically thing as the manufacturer right all right we're going to go on a short break and when we return we'll continue on this conversation please do stay with us
Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. Now, before we went on the short break, I was about to ask you a question. Um, is it safe to say, you know, because I know, I know we can't say um, limits your production, but it, it, would it be safe to say that, you know, maybe they overproduced or maybe they, you know, I, I'm looking for the best way to put it. Well, for manufacturing sector, you know, they have a research arm that always forecast. Okay. So we wouldn't say that it's overproduction because they okay. must have forecast during using data, you know, different uh, a, a way of, uh, uh, it could be time series, it could be, you know, the growth, you know, you know they, they can even use one of these three. They can use the economic uh, uh, level to, they can use social, they can use technological way of making sure that they forecast appropriately. I don't think that's a problem. The problem is the purchasing power of Nigerians, and I must also they say this is a, a responsive uh, government would have today this morning engaged them and get find a way of buying this okay. produce for them okay. over time and find a way of using. Okay. So these are the things they need to look at. All right. So we we'll have joining us virtually the DG of Man Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, Mr. Shego Carter. Good morning. Good morning, madam, and uh, thank you for having me on your program. We have in the studio with us um, Ali Elias uh, is joining us live here in the studio as an economist. Now, um, you put out a report, your organization, your association put out a report talking about the job losses and unsold goods that you have. Could you explain that further for us? Because maybe we're just seeing the report, but you know the legwork, the research that was, that was done to get those numbers. Yes, so we, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria will normally do half-year economic review in, in which we assess, uh, we look at the macroeconomic and the policy environment in which our members operate. And so uh, we have 2,500 members and we do a very representative survey that gives impression as to how our businesses have been impacted by the environment. And the one you mentioned, which is about the job creation that we normally monitor, we discovered that there was that huge difference in terms of what job was created in the first half of year 2022 and what is uh, created in the year 2023. So the story behind that drastic uh, reduction is the fact that the year 2023 itself has come with a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. As you are aware, it's an election year, uh, and the period under review fell squarely within that period. We also have had quite a number of uh, uh, more, more or less ruinous policies that have tended to uh, obliterate the idea of making any growth or profit in the sector. We had the uh, for instance, the, I mean, the Naira transition to a new currency, which was badly managed. We also had another escalation in the price of diesel, which is the alternative to power. We also had an unprecedented apathy in terms of consumer uh, purchases. So all of these tenders to combine to make manufacturing capacity utilization to go down as we related in, in the picture. So if all of this play together, you wouldn't expect the manufacturer to continue to hire more hands. If anything, it has to embark on a cutback process that reduces its fixed costs because what you pay your worker is fixed, whether your production capacity is 60%, is 30%, is 20%, you have fixed costs, including how much you pay those who work for you. Okay. So I think with this background, it is not difficult to uh, appreciate how we have had that drastic reduction. Okay, so, um, sir, I would like for you to go deep into the report for me, and you could tell us specifically subsectors in the manufacturing industry that were affected by this job loss and the unsold products. Okay, so in the manufacturing sector, we have 10 sectors and about 70 subsectors. So, and I can tell you that this drastic reduction in terms of new employments cut across all the sectors. But what we have seen is that 
the unsold aspect, and which is very, very, very important in terms of seeking government intervention. Before now, we had a situation where those, those items that we have produced, but we are not able to sell, was in the value that's uh, in the first half of last year, was in the value of maybe more than 87 billion naira. But it has jumped to 272 billion now which is an indication that even though we have produced, we have suffered all the costs of production which has escalated, we are now having to, uh, to hire warehouses where we are going to keep those products. One, because the average consumer is having to spend money in other things that the prices have gone up, and they have not purchased those items that we have produced. Mm -hmm. Now, this is one of the very uh, uh, serious challenges that confronts a manufacturer because most of our products have shelf life. And so if you continue to store them, they can get to the end period for consumption and you now have to incur costs to dispose of it. Yes, because I'm so going to it, go to that, to that, what you just mentioned now when you were done, but since you're already there, let's, let's continue on that track what happens after hiring your warehouses and you put those things there what happens when these things expire what, what goes wrong and what do you do to see that it doesn't go bad or, or you don't you don't lose outright yeah. yes because there are regulatory uh, uh procedures that you need to follow some of our products particularly consumables have six months lifespan and so if you don't get people you need to go and evacuate and approach the regulatory agencies for disposal. It's not a situation where you can recycle them in most, most cases. So it means that you have suffered a loss loss. Mm -hmm. You have incurred costs to produce, you have incurred costs to store, you are going to incur costs to destroy, so to say. And the net gain is that your manufacturing performance dwindles your profitability dwindles, and your capacity to service your working capital and loans that you have in, uh, are taken from the banks becomes jeopardized. So there are quite a number of, of all the, of revelations made in, in the half-year uh, economic review that we put out. For instance, we spoke about the local sourcing of our raw materials, which has been negatively impacted by insecurity, and even though in nominal value, they have tended to increase. But in real terms, in terms of the cost of procuring them locally, we have suffered a, I mean, a setback. We've also spoken about uh, the high level of, uh, of uh, manufacturing uh, purchases apathy. Now, this should be compared with how the foreign products are performing in the market. When you are not buying made in Nigerian products, which of course has emerged from a high cost environment, you leave the alternative for those who, that have come in from relatively low cost environment. And some of them, you know, they come in through uh, smuggling, others come in through the ports. But because the environment in which they are coming from is low cost, you have them uh, performing better in the market. So we, we have had uh, quite a number of, of, of period. And we can only hope that okay. all the measures that are being taken by government now translate into a better uh, second half of the year. Otherwise, I mean, uh, we are beginning to have apprehensions about the possibility of a recession. And I, I just hope that that does not happen. Okay, so just... Before you go, just give us your recommendations to the government on how that this situation has happened now will not be what we're going to see come the second half report for this year. Okay, so there are quite a number of low-hanging fruits that government can remove in the way, at least to stop the drain that we are having. Okay. And one of them, I mean, that actually emerged only in the last two months of the first half of the year, is this price verification portal that has been put in place by the CBN. Okay. It's a good thing that we have a new CBN government. And I think one of the first things you should do in order not to bring virtual collapse 
of the uh, importation of raw materials, uh, machines, and, uh, and spare parts that are not locally available. It is to review the operation of that price verification portal. Because what it has done is that it has set its threshold for the value of the imports that manufacturers have to make. Whereas experience has shown, and many companies now for upwards of three to four weeks are not able to import their raw materials. Experience has shown that those prices are not realistic okay. and that there has to be a conversation between the central bank and the operators in, in, that, in that sector, in the manufacturing space. For us to have a dialogue as to how government can achieve its forex management policy and then manufacturers are able to continue to produce. Okay. We also have issues about the ease of doing business, the control of regulatory agencies so that they don't turn to revenue generating agencies, but to okay. facilitate the employment. Then we see the forex allocation, the guy, I mean, the gentleman who spoke earlier indicated that there has to be a special purpose vehicle that helps the manufacturers to go through this reform process in such a way that they are insulated okay. from the challenges that will not allow them to be the drivers of the reflation of the economy. Because what we really need what? now is to build confidence, right, is to build um, ease of doing business, is Thank to enable so the Thank sector so much to be able to perform this, this role. It's been a pleasure having you. You brought in so much insight and so much knowledge on the issue. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. That was the DG of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria speaking on the report on the business environment of the first half of the year 2023 now back to you we have a very short time just to round right up. right yes I, I know you want to say one or two things to what he said right just to converse for for manufacturing sector that government should come and uh intervene because uh, when they say they have unsold sometimes government need to intervene if not this uh, can snowball mm -hmm. into negative impact of the economy because now they have lost such number what will happen next? next yes. Perhaps they don't have money to reinvest. Yes, what yes, happens? So the government need to intervene okay. and engage uh, with them appropriately. Okay. Now, before we go, he said something. Right. Thank God we have a new CBN governor. Right. <laughs> well, we 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 saw that the video of our former governor of Edo State, uh, yes, former NLC better, chairman. Yes. You know, and he had some very strong words to say. Due to lack of time, we'll not be able to play the video. But I, I want to believe you've seen. Right. I've the seen video. the video. Uh, ordinarily, uh, we, we, it's a good thing to have new CBN governor. And while he was talking, right. you see that the energy is there. Everything is there. Is everything is going appropriately? However, what's uh, President, I mean, the former president of NLC has mentioned, Shomali, is quite but, yes, very, very important. Quite and Jamie, in fact, it speaks in mind of a lot of us. Most of us always have issue when we have uh, a banker being the CBN governor. We also want, we also always have a second thought when we also have people playing the politics of International Monetary Fund or Britain Wood as it were. So, but, but by and large, what is in the front of Cardoso and his team are very enormous. But they are surmountable. If he is going with the right policy, you know, he's always, you know, like he rightly said, you know, he tactically told Nigeria today, uh, that day, that he's not going to go the way of Emifili, that intervene in Anchor Borowa, you know, different finance. So, as a CBN governor, your major thing is to governize and make sure the microeconomy and the aggregate uh, fund is well uh, managed. And also, the monetary policy itself, because if you look at it, the day President Tinubu become president, he declared that there should be subsidy removal. That is a fiscal policy. Mm -hmm. So now he does not have the power on everything. He can only manage the monetary policy. So fiscal policy must be well managed and we must have a better trade policy to have a good economy in Nigeria. Thank you so much, Ali Elias. Thank you so much. Thank you for having That's me. That's the much we have for you today on Business Daily. It's been quite an uh, informative and educative um, program today, learning about the manufacturing sector. Now, if you want more of this, don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms, on our YouTube live stream, and on our website, trusttv.com. Same time, same place tomorrow, we'll be here to discuss more on business. I am Chiamaka. Stay safe and please spend wisely.